Welcome to the first episode in a legendary special about the Peasants' War of 1524 and 1525. In the first part, we will talk about how the economic changes unfolding in early modern Europe placed German peasants under intolerable strain. They were inspired to rebel against their earthly lords by Martin Luther's defiance of the church. Throughout the Middle Ages, society rested on a tripartite social system of nobles, churchmen, and peasants. The peasants made up 90% of the population and did all the chores, supporting those with better things to do, like praying or slaughtering their fellow man. Though the peasants revolted before, they were always small and local uprisings directed against an abusive lord. Things changed going into the early modern age. The lords began seizing peasant pasture land and using them to graze their sheep upon, as their wool brought in more money than peasant grain. Even worse, the lords took away traditional peasant rights to cut wood in the forest and go fishing in the river, which left the peasants more dependent on their lords than ever before to make ends meet, and the lords took advantage of the peasants' distress. They made the peasants perform unpaid labor on money-making schemes, which took the peasantry away from their crops. The peasants were especially angered by the lord's insistence that they gather and carry animal feces for their compost heaps. Traditionally, the Catholic Church helped the lords keep control of the peasants by promising heaven to those who followed church teachings, which included not rebelling against the feudal lords. It also promised eternal damnation to those who caused problems. Yet in the 1510s, Martin Luther challenged the power of the church, insisting that it did not have the right to teach the Gospels, that the church hierarchy was not justified by scripture, and that the faithful would find salvation in faith alone, not the clergy. Many peasants, including wealthier families, soon decided that if Martin Luther could challenge the princes of the church, then they could challenge the worldly princes who lorded over them. After all, it wasn't the truly poor peasants who were threatened by the Lord's changes, but the middling sort, and they could read and write so they knew about the big changes unfolding in their country. The Peasants' War began in the summer of 1524 in the county of Stalingen in the region of Upper Swabia, a part of the Holy Roman Empire. Though it included 20 million of Europe's 80 million people, the empire was a loose federation of states that elected its emperor. In Stalingen, the Countess of Lufden ordered 1,200 peasants to abandon their fields and collect snail shells, which could be sold to make spools in sewing. Having already suffered bad harvests and facing starvation if they abandoned their current crop, the peasants of Lufden instead took up arms rather than snail shells. The revolt spread across modern-day southern and central Germany with astonishing speed. As far west as Switzerland and Austria, roaming bands of peasants burned the grand manor houses of German princes and nobles. The rebels carried an unlaced shoe tied to a post as their banner, with the shoe symbolizing the march of the peasantry towards a new Eden, free from corrupt lords and dishonest clergy. Indeed, some of the peasants' goals were religious in character, but they also wanted to retake control of their communities and their lives. They demanded the right to choose their own priests, keep tithes within their own communities, and restore traditional rights to the forest and common pasture. Because of a wonderful new invention called the printing press, the rebels could run off propaganda broadsides against the lords. 
since Luther wrote a Bible in plain German that was now available to all, the rebels could point to scripture to show their demands had biblical grounds. They published a manifesto called the Twelve Articles of the Christian Union, reprinted 25,000 times to win recruits and justify their uprising. This also shows that many of the peasant rebels were not miserable downtrodden serfs, but literate and well-educated farmers. Though the rebels had the printing press on their side, they did not have Martin Luther, the man who unknowingly sparked the uprising. At first, the rebels committed violence against property, not people. They ransacked manor houses, burned them to ashes, took fish from the nobles' ponds, and cut woods in forests supposedly reserved to the lords. That changed when they began seizing supplies and cannons to carry out sieges of the lords' castles. On April 16th, 1525, Easter Sunday for that year, a peasant army besieged and captured Weinsberg Castle. Little Jack Rohrbach, the peasant leader of this force, forced his noble-born prisoners to run the gauntlet. The nobles had to run between two lines of men who beat them bloody with whips and staffs until they dropped dead. Traditionally, this punishment was reserved for the lowest of the low, typically army deserters. This would cause Martin Luther to turn against the revolt, and he would give the lords a religious license to take a savage revenge. After all, Martin Luther believed a stable social order was necessary to carry out the Reformation, and there was no room in his vision for a peasant uprising that would turn the world upside down. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comment section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.